you were a cruise area life applications officer, uh, trying to get some good lighting here. Can't put it there. That's wouldn't work for me. I think it looks better over there at you. All right, we'll leave it there. That's good enough. Hey, D. Roy Cruz here, your life applications officer. Um, I want to say a few things about um the comments that come to my channel as well as what's dumb about the people that come to my channel and why they come to my channel, why they even subscribe, why they even bother to subscribe to my channel. <clears throat> okay, now we have atheists, of course, who subscribe to my channel, and they, they seem to think that, or they seem to have this, I wouldn't even say think, I don't think they're thinking at all, but I think they have this idea that it makes great sense to come to my channel as a team and all each taking their turn subscribing to my channel as a team and they get on my channel because they know me from other channels of people who complain about me and they come on to my channel and they have nothing to say and once they get on my channel, I could be talking about politics. I could be talking about atheism. I could be talking about the Bible. I could be talking to Christians. I could be talking to anybody. But once these demonic attitudes get on my channel, they will just criticize everything, even if it has nothing to do with them, even if it's the topic is over their head. They'll, they'll, they're there to criticize. They're not there because they like my channel. They're not there because they're trying to learn anything. They're there to harass me because being I'm on YouTube and they're on YouTube, the only way they can harass me is to send these nasty comments to me and tell me how dumb and stupid I am and, and all like that. But who are these people? Are they not atheists? And once, and like I said, once they get on your channel because they don't like something that you said about atheism or they don't like something that you said about homosexuals, you don't have to talk about atheism anymore for them to comment on everything that you talk about. They'll comment on it because they just don't like you. They hate you. And, and so I'm supposed to learn from this. I'm supposed to look at my comment section on my videos, which I don't. I want all of you to know that. I really don't pay attention to my comment section. Um... I found out that the more professional people don't pay attention to their comment section unless they're looking for a certain person to make a comment, okay? Um, they just don't pay attention to their comment section. I don't either. I used to. When I first started YouTube back in 2013, I made most of my videos off the comment section 
And I had to tear them videos down because they were just repeating the same thing over and over and over. Because when you look at it, these, these demonic attitudes that come to my channel, they just say the same things over and over and over. So I'm making videos about the same thing over and over and over. You know. Um, these haters, these demonic attitudes, these attitudes of Satan that come to my channel. I just want y'all to know you're wasting your time. Because my goal is to apply everything that I talk about to the Bible. My goal is to mock and 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 criticize the forces around me that are not godlike. That is my job as a life applications officer. My job is to take the Bible and apply everything in life to that Bible. Speaking of Bible, never start a video with I. Never start a video without a Bible. Okay, not that I'm going to read from it, but it's part of the props of the video. Now, um, again, um, Again, uh, the title of this video is going to be, I'm going to get on with it, because I don't care about haters on my channel. I don't care. Um, the title of this video is, God is not religion, and what I've been getting on my channel, there's people to get on my channel and they make these big long novels. I'm going to tell you again, if you want to be heard, if you want somebody to listen to you, do the same thing I'm doing. Get yourself a YouTube channel, okay, and Talk about your topics for somewhere between 10 minutes to 2 hours, if you want to. Okay? That's why I got on YouTube, because I was going around all these um, channels, and listening to these atheists, and listening to them badger these Christians. And... I would put comments there, and we would argue, and I put another comment, and another comment, and another comment, and another comment. And then finally I realized this is ridiculous. Why don't I just start my own channel? And that's what I did. But don't come to my channel and put this big, long message there, because I'm telling you, I don't read it. I read probably the first two sentences. I don't even read a whole paragraph of that mess. Okay. Get your own channel, and if you want to send me a link to your video, I will watch it. Okay? Now, God is not religion. What I got coming to my channel is people trying to tell me two things. They're trying to tell me, one, that the Bible or the Christianity started in the Roman Empire. It's all about the Greeks and the Roman Empire and Constantine and all that kind of stuff. I disagree. I disagree. The Bible to me goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. This Bible 
did not start in the book of Acts. It did not start when Jesus showed up. Okay, near the Sea of Galilee. It did not show there. It did not start there. This Bible started at the beginning of time. Now maybe it was written. Actually, the scientific parts of the Bible, like the book of Genesis and um, the Patriots, you know, um, the, Pen, the Pentua, I think that's what it's called, of the Bible. Um, this was written by people back in those times. Moses wrote, I believe, the first four or five books of the Bible. Okay? Moses is a leader of my faith. That's a long time before Jesus Christ. A long time before Jesus Christ. Moses is a leader of my faith. A long time before Jesus Christ. Okay? So, when you say that the Bible started in in Jesus' time, because, yes, that is true. As Christians, we are taught to be Christians through Christ Jesus. But this is what's dumb about these atheists and other people who want to be skeptic and try to teach us how to be skeptic. Keep your skepticism to yourself. I don't need to hear it, okay? Jesus quoted what? Himself? No! He quoted the Old Testament. So if we're to be like Jesus and be his followers, what are we quoting? What are we reading? Why does the Bible have an Old Testament in it if the Bible started at the, at the New Testament when Jesus came? And that is the limits of our Christian faith. No, it isn't. Adam and Eve and the line of Seth and the fact that even before that, when God was here in the beginning and he said, let there be light. It's the beginning of my faith. This, this right here is Christianity. Not just how many denominations you can name or how many religions you can name that talk about Jesus. Okay? But this book right here is our faith. This is what we believe, preach, and practice. This is what we believe, preach, and practice right here. Okay? So, when you say that it all started after Constantine or in the Roman Empire. You're talking about Catholicism. You're not talking about Christian. Oh my God, here we go. D -D 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 Roy, Mr. Cruz, here you go. You're trying to say it is separate. Catholics are not Christians. Now, you know, we respect the fact that they have some good things in their religion and in their faith. But the Catholic Church, the Vatican, okay, the papacy, did not start 
Christianity. Christianity, or should I say the word Christian, because Christianity today in 2019 is a big word. You got religions that are religions of Satan that are called Christian, okay, or Christianity. But the term Christian comes from only one thing, and that is Christ and him crucified for us. Let me say that again. The word Christian comes from one thing, Christ and him crucified for us. That's why we are the persecuted church. That's what the word Christian means. It doesn't mean a hundred things. It doesn't mean a hundred things. People kill me with that. Like they keep saying, well, you know, they keep trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. It's plain and simple. Christ and him crucified for us. Ugh. Ugh. Got me some grape juice with a couple teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Clean you out. You know, clean up your sinuses and you know, and help you sleep. Um, so right away, when people say, well, how do you know that your religion is the truth? How do you know your religion is the right one? Um, I didn't know I was religious. Where did God tell anybody to go and start religions? Now, if you ask me a question, why, why, would, why are you Pentecostal? That would be a more appropriate question. But just because I'm Pentecostal, that doesn't mean that a Baptist isn't a Christian. But a Jehovah's Witness, that's a totally different animal. So is a Mormon. So is a Scientologist. So is uh, a Christian scientist. So is, uh, 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 you know, um, these Hebrew Israelite people. That's something different. Okay? But anyone who accepts Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, I cannot say that they are not a Christian. But if they argue with me about who Jesus is, I will tell them flat out, I will get up in their face and say, you, sir, are not a Christian. You, sir, are not a Christian. Because unless you make the sacrifice... To be a Christian, and that would be number three, first of all, unless you understand who Jesus is and what he's done for you, number one. Number two, unless you are born again, and number three, unless you make the sacrifice. You are not a Christian. What is the sacrifice? Your body, your flesh. You got to let go of your fornication, your liquor, your drugs, okay? You got to let go of your anger. You got to let go of your bullying. You got to let go of your mockery. You got to let go of a me, 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 me attitude. It's all about me. Okay, your egos, your, your, your pride, your arrogance, all that stuff of the flesh. It's all about you and making you feel good. You got to let that go. If you can't let that go, you're not a Christian. That goes back to me talking about God's morality versus atheist morality. Because God's morality is about integrity. Atheist morality is about decisions of what people can go to jail for and what they should be let off the hook for. What is a misdemeanor and what is manslaughter? Okay? What is murder? Or, or you know what I'm saying? That's atheist morality. No, God's morality is about integrity. It's called the oil of gladness. 
Okay? It's called the beauty of holiness. Okay? That's God's integrity. Okay? Um, so, when you are sitting up there cussing and quoting scripture to me at the same time, you need to shut the F up. And talk to somebody that respects you talking that way. Because I have no respect for you when you constantly cuss while reading from scripture or reading from something online that's dealing with the Bible and you're constantly cussing while you're talking about it. Okay? That make me want to cuss right with you and tell you to kiss my black egg and get out of my face. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Because if you're so of your flesh that you can't stop, put away your cussing for 20 minutes for a Google Hangout or 20 minutes for a simple dialogue or something, you got a real serious problem. I don't want to be around that demon. Okay? I don't want to be around that demon. People cuss because they think it's cute. They cuss because cussing is a symbol of who your friends are. It's a symbol of what type of people you belong to. That's why people cuss. When I go to work every day and people say, what the F this and F that, mother F and B-I-T-C-H and blah, 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 everything's a cuss word. They're letting you know what level of what tribal evil that they're on. Okay? And then if you cuss right along with them like that, now you have something in common. But if you don't, you'd be surprised how the conversation will change when this guy realizes he's the only one in the room that's cussing that bad. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the Old Testament and the New Testament are Christian. It's not Abrahamic religions. Now, ever since the day that men begin to call upon the name of the Lord in the book of Genesis, which is the beginning of our faith, it didn't just start when Jesus came. When Jesus came, he started the new covenant. But Jesus quoted what? What did Jesus quote? He quoted the Old Testament. What law did Jesus practice? The Old Testament. Okay? So, stop. Okay, with this madness. The line of Seth, Adam's son, before even Noah or Moses, the line of Seth, last verse of the fourth chapter of Genesis says, and then men begin to call upon the name of the Lord or the name of Yahweh. Yahweh and, Elo and the Elohim are the same person. Okay? It may be that the angel of the Lord and Jesus Christ are the same person. This is where a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses get confused because they figure if Jesus is the angel of the Lord, then he must be an angel. No, that was a title because of the way he came in and out. He was a messenger but he was not in like appearance or in like uh, being as an angel. He may have been a messenger with special powers, but he was not an angel. Okay? Just because you're a messenger, you can be an angel and be a messenger. Okay? But just because you're a messenger, that doesn't make you an angel. Okay? I can be a messenger. Am I an angel? No. I'm an angel compared to an atheist. 
I'm an angel compared to an atheist, but I'm not an angel. Okay? The Old Testament and the New Testament are Christian. Get it? Were the people of the Old Testament Christians? They were Israelites. If you look, if you look up in the see, and, and, and see, this is the thing that kills me because no atheist was going to sit down and read all this. Just like I'm not going to sit down and read why God may have not made the rainbow. I'm not going to take my time to read that pseudoscience garbage. Okay? I'm not going to sit down and try to uh, try to argue whether, whether the water came out of a rock after Moses first struck the rock or have they always been coming out of the rock? How do you know? How do you know? Well, this is a book. Just like your science books or books. Just like I can't go and prove from this just by reading it. I can't. That doesn't put it in a test tube and prove anything. Well, me reading a science books does not prove billions of years. And it doesn't prove a lack of a flood. It doesn't prove that God did not do anything. So when you teach people that, who's really the false teacher? Me or you? Because you're teaching things that you have nothing to prove. We have reason to believe 100%. God said it, that sells it. But you have no reason to believe half the stuff that's being taught to you in college. You want to believe it because you don't want to believe this. You want to believe it because you don't want to believe this, like Napoleon said. Okay? You can believe anything you want to believe, just don't believe in the Bible. Okay? You can believe that aliens are up in the, up in the planets peeing down on us. That's why we have rain if you want to. People would rather believe that than to believe the Bible. Okay? You can believe that the rainbow, okay, was the first symbol that gay people would begin to populate on earth, okay? It's easier to believe that than it is to believe the Bible, okay? That's another video. <laughs> but God is not religion. God is standard in separation. He's standard because what he did in the beginning, he did for us. He did for the planet that we live in. He did for men and women. This is why we don't believe in homosexuality because what he did in the very beginning, he did for males and females to coexist together and reproduce and have children. And nowhere in scripture did he create sex for pleasure outside of the bonds of marriage. So, God is standard. God told the first people that ever existed how to hunt, how to cook and eat. This is why the Jews are God's chosen people. This is why the Jews cannot help themselves but be arrogant because they know that when they go to the Tanakh, when they go to the Hebrew Bible, they know that no religion on this planet can counterfeit 
what God has done through the Jewish people in the beginning. But Jesus got mad. Now this is where Christianity or Christian comes in. Jesus rebuked the Jews. Not because he wanted to shatter their Israelite heritage. It was already shattered. He rebuked the Jews because of their religion, which God is not religion. Okay? So therefore, he rebuked the Jews because they went from the whole point of what the Sabbath really meant to trying to punish people for making mistakes on the Sabbath. They went through understanding what the law was. They're trying to use the law to punish people, okay, as if there was no grace before Jesus Christ. There has always been God's grace. It, just, it didn't just start with Jesus. There has always been God's grace and mercy on people. <clears throat> God is standard. He's the standard of how we have sex in marriage. He's the standard of children. He's the standard of uh, food and, and even um, sanitation, protecting ourselves and our bodies. The first medicine was practiced at the tabernacle. The first hospital was in the tabernacle. Where the Jews assembled were the priests. They were the first nurses and doctors to exist. The very priest of the tabernacle. They did all the medicine. Oh my God, can you not see why all these religions of the world want to try to duplicate them and make these false claims? Can you not see that? Even Islam, the hallmark of it is a false claim. They never really, really had a connection to Abraham. Where did they get a connection to Abraham? Oh, they read, they read parts of the Bible that they like and added it to their religion. But they never really, really, really were of the Jews. They were against the Jews. Okay? And they try to fabricate the story of Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael became the father of the Arab nations, and there had always been war between Jews and Arabs. It's really not that difficult. But religion makes it difficult, and now atheists, atheism, being the newest religion, growing members to it, makes even things even more difficult. God is not religion. But when I tell you that these atheists are a satanic religion, trust me, I BS you not. I BS you not. All you got to do is go to my channel and look at who's commenting and how many of them are atheists compared to normal people, so to speak. Atheists are normal people, but, okay, to me, they're, they're, they're entities. They're, 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 you know, that's another video. God is not religion. God is standard. And God is separation. Okay? God is separation. So yes, if we find ourselves religious, I'm going to separate my so-called religion from yours because God did what? You don't know the Bible, so you don't know this. But God separated his people from all the religions. He said, you shall serve no other gods before me or besides me. In other words, you shall not mix 
the Jewish God with Dagon or Baal or Ashtoreth or any of the other gods, false gods out there, nor their religions to go with their gods. And the counterfeit today is that there's religions out there to try to claim that we're all serving the same God and we're not. Matter of fact, I watched Brother Berean here on YouTube last night. He talked about how the word Allah was never in the beginning meant to represent the same God that Christians believe in. Okay? Each letter of the, of the word Allah was the name of a part of an animal's body. Okay? Matter of fact, I think I'll, I might do a video on that. I might put put him up there and do a video on him. But Allah is not God. Now a lot of atheists will argue with me. And a lot of even, and even some Christians that really don't do their homework, they'll argue with me. But Allah and God are two things. Allah is not Yahweh. Allah is not Elohim or Elohim. Allah is God of the crescent moon. He is a false God, and each letter of his name represents a name of one of his body parts. Woo! I tell you, lies upon lies upon lies, and the atheists are the dumb suckers who fell into this trap. You don't have to serve my God. You don't have to believe. You don't have to become a Christian. Oh, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But when the truth is right in front of you and you reject it, whatever repercussions, okay, that you suffer for being childish and immature, okay, you put that on yourself. You made your bed, you're lying. So God is not religion. God is standard, and God is separation, and God is authority. Because there's only one God. There's only one God. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So when we when we understand the secrets of the kingdom, we're not just understanding them, but we live there and we are what we are because of that. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in, in, in Yahweh, the Elohim. There's power. There's power. Okay? But these other religions out there, when you serve these religions, it's like being a part of a club. Okay? And there's really no change in your life. Just you using your religion as a form of pride to make you feel like you're something that you're not. And even though you practice separation, that's no different than a bunch of atheists getting together, you know, and having a hot, hot dog party and sitting around listening to Richard Dawkins. Okay? While he tells you to be rude, nasty Christians. Okay? It's no different. Okay? There's no difference. It's very hard for me not to tell people about Jesus. Even though I may feel that God chose me. And if he didn't choose you, that's your problem. But it's very hard for me not to talk about Jesus. Very difficult. Where am I? I'm closing. Very difficult for me not to talk about Jesus to a fallen world. I know these atheists and even my Jehovah Witness friends. They want me to shut my mouth. But the truth of the matter is, Me shutting my mouth is like me not being honest about black people and how black people are destroying their own 
so-called black community. Me shutting my mouth about God is like me not telling my neighbors that the mob is coming or that there's going to be there's a there's a murderer lurking in our in our presence. He's living among us. He could pull out his gun and shoot us at any moment. That's what is that's what he does. But I tell people about Jesus, not because I'm a bigot and I, I need to I, I need to compete with anybody about anything. We've already won. There's nothing to compete about. Why? Because God is not religion, okay? But, I tell you because I love you. And I care enough about you, okay, that you don't need to continue to lie to yourself. And to show you where you lack a conscience. Okay? But if God restore your conscience, you'd have to ask yourself some hard questions. Instead of being on my channel, waiting for me to do the next video so you can criticize before you get even get two seconds into the video, you can start throwing hate. Half of y'all don't even watch my videos. You just go there to put comments on my videos. Okay? You don't even listen to what I got to say. So, you know what? When I tell you that these atheists are a demonic cult, trust me. Okay? Trust me on that. But God is not religion. God is love. God is standard. God is separation. And God is authority. God is love because... He, sh he sent his own son to die that you and I might be saved. He created the world for us that we might learn from this world and live with him in the next world. Okay? That's how he loved us and, and he sent his own son um, to die for us because he knows that we can never ever be so sinless that we are righteous enough to where we don't have to keep punishing ourselves or being punished for our sins. Okay? He loves us. He's standard because the Bible is the standard. The standard is right here. How can you have all these religions out of the same Bible? You don't. 99% of them are misinterpreting something that's very simple. They're misinterpreting it, okay? But it, the Bible is the standard. God wants to separate his people from the world. God, When God saves you, he calls you out of the world, okay? He calls you out of the world. And last but least, just because God doesn't get up in your face and slap you around like he should be doing, that does not mean that he doesn't have a plan for your punishment. That does not mean that his wrath isn't coming because God is authority. Okay? God is authority. And he will judge those that refuse to accept him. Because he is your father and you only got one heavenly father. You don't have a hundred. So therefore, he has a right to punish you for your lack of, of accepting him. I'm the Recruit, your Life Applications Officer. Okay. Um, more to come. Thanks for watching.